Well, a mere 45 years after first stumbling into astronomy in uh, 1972 back in Bermuda and then eventually essentially getting a job at the planetarium in Miami after when I was 13 or something. It's been about 45 years that I've been waiting for the show, the big the big one. There's there's really, you know, it's like World War II is the big one and the solar eclipse is a big one and I got to see it. Hi everybody, I'm Bill Little here with Steve Green and Scott out with a very strange right angle for a number of reasons. First of all, <laughs> Uh, it doesn't really make sense that I asked Scott and Steve about something that they didn't see while I did. That it's not exactly logical. And secondly, you know, I, I I thought about this. It's like it's over. It's done. You saw it or you didn't. You know, it's not like. But I got to talk about the eclipse because I because it's all I can think about. So that's what we're gonna do. So since you guys didn't see the total eclipse and I did, I thought what I'd do is I'd just tell you basically the story of what it looked like, and then you can each ask me a question. We'll call it a show and wrap it up. Those, 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 those brilliant. People brilliant. Watch. They'll watch it. Either. Lazy, but brilliant. Um, okay, so, <laughs> uh, and, and by the way, let me just preface this by saying, obviously, these are my observations and, I, and not necessarily anyone else's, and I don't want to offend anybody's feelings because the first thing I want to say is, if you saw a partial eclipse of the sun, you didn't see anything. I've seen a partial eclipse of the sun many times. It's a bite out of the cookie, and some people saw a really, really big bite out of the cookie. But one of the first things I learned about a solar eclipse was I could see the, the sun at 99% eclipsed is still not worth going to see. It's just a super big bite out of the cookie. I had one misconception essentially about watching a solar eclipse, and my misconception was that it, as the sun was being occulted by the moon, it would get darker and darker and darker and darker and darker and slowly would go completely black. That's not what happens. Certainly around 50% obscured, you're looking around, it's like the sunlight feels kind of weak, but all the way down to the final, final second, the sun is so incredibly brilliant that even 1% of the sun is far too bright to simply look at. You just can't look up there. And so watching this little crescent get thinner and thinner and thinner, I thought that it was going to basically just be a ramp, but it's not like that. When the sun, when the sun is finally eclipsed from, from the, by the moon, something happens that you're just going to have to take my word for. We know the sky is blue because it scatters the light from the sun, but as that final 1% of the sun goes out, all of the light in the sky and the sky itself seems to get sucked up into this hole. It's just the light just disappears and goes into this, and then you're standing there with this hole in the sky where the sun used to be. I remember it as being quite blue. I'm sure that was just a, a figment of my imagination. And I'll tell you one other thing. I said, look, I'm not going to try and photograph this. It's going to be millions of great photographs of it. All I'm going to do is go up there and take a selfie of me, you know, just a <laughs> selfie of me with the eclipse sun in the background. It'd be my, my record after 45 years. And I didn't do it. And I, oh. and I didn't realize I didn't do it till I was on the plane home. And then I thought, you know, who, who could forget to take a selfie? Just one selfie. Who could forget to take a selfie during a solar eclipse? And I got on the plane. I realized I didn't have the picture. I said, who could remember to take That's a selfie right. during a solar eclipse? Folks, for two minutes and 20 seconds or something like that, I got the sense that there was no time on Earth, that the time didn't exist. There was a big cheer when the sun finally went out and and all of that. And, and everybody was just stunned. But I think my recorders just the, the tape just ran off the reel i just I, and and then it was over but here's the here's the one thing i just would like to try to describe as, as weakly as i as strongly as i can which is still pretty weak and that's this it's the quality of the light you got a glimpse of it just as the light was going out the solar corona is the atmosphere of the sun uh, we always look at the sun. We know it's bright up there. Occasionally catch a, a, a quick glimpse of it, but we can never really look at the sunlight. And so the sun we see is the setting sun, afternoon sun, evening sun. We see it orange, kind of red. But when the moon is in front of the sun, you realize that the corona and the light from the sun is this unbelievable pearly white light. It, there's no way to describe the solar corona. It 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 looks like an effect. It was smaller than I thought it would be the whole the whole thing, but there's this this white crystalline perfect perfect white glow up there around the sun, and a few stars came out. But this is the moment I'm trying to describe. And the whole reason I'm doing the show is to describe this moment. 
we're looking at the sun, it's still an eclipse, and as the moon moves off of the face of the sun, there was a moment, and I, I reckon that moment was a second or less, there was a moment when as the first of the sunlight began to come back, that you could look directly at sunlight and see sunlight as it is. Because a second after that, it 1%, half a percent of the sun got so bright that you simply can't look at it anymore. And that moment of that light coming out and filling the whole sky is something I will never, ever forget. It's like watching, it's, it's as close to you can imagine as watching God's face come out from behind a cloud. It's, you, you get just a second, one second, if that, of seeing sunlight directly in a way that you've never seen sunlight before. And the beauty of it, the, 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 just, the, the, just the shocking, stunning beauty of it, this, this perfect, perfect white light, it, I'll, I'll never forget it as, as long as I live. By the way, the second that the sun moves off, the moon moves off the sun, everything after that is anticlimactic. Once, once the <laughs> eclipse is over and it's too bright to look at again, then it's just Start the last Start the car, Louise. <laughs> <laughs> Time to go home. But it was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. And I've said before on Stratosphere Lounge and so on, that there's some evidence that the ability to predict eclipses is what started mathematics and, and calendars in, in ancient cultures like the Chinese and the Mayans. And I, I couldn't figure out why. I thought, oh, it's a nice conjuring trick, I guess. And then I finally realized it. It's like, once you see this, you have to see it again. You just you just have to go. And and that's about it, I guess. But it was without question the most astonishing thing I've ever seen in my life. It, um, the most unnatural thing in the world to have it dark, see this hole, this black hole where the sun used to be. And final thing is, you know, when the sun goes down, it gets cooler. Obviously, everybody knows this. It's warm in the daytime. It's cool in the nighttime. But to feel that temperature drop of 15 degrees happen in the space of three or four minutes also gives you a sense of how cold space is and how cold things are without that, without that, the companion of ours up there. So that was my um, uh, my eclipse experience. And, and Bill, Scotty, why don't we start with you? Yeah, I was just going to say, there's a good reason why you, you don't think to take a selfie at a moment like that, because as it sort of sucked the color out of the sky, it sucks the self out of you. It you, did. It, you that's begin, exactly right. You I begin had no, to realize I had no ego and no identity. That yeah, there's there is a magnificence. That image that you I kept thinking of the the scriptural verse that says, "Now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face." You know, there'll be this this moment in the presence of God where this just absolute brilliance. Um, and I think you know, as close as we can get to something like that here on Earth, you experienced. Uh, I, by the way, uh, not to brag, but I was actually. Uh, sitting in an office looking at a PowerPoint presentation. I know all our viewers are very jealous about that. <laughs> but I, I loved how it kind of brought people together. I love the idea that we knew where it was going to be visible. Like we, we knew the track across the United States of America where the occlusion would be complete. And um, just the fact that we live in an ordered universe that doesn't fly apart at a whim, <laughs> um, that, that we can literally predict years in advance that these things are going to happen and prepare for them and, and get the geeks on NASA TV all fired up. Um, that was that was a, a really awesome moment. And I just, the, the word that kept coming to me as you're describing that, you with your firsthand experience, is that you got a little taste of the sacred. Yes, yes. I saw the light go out and then I saw the light come on. And it, it you, because of the way the atmosphere scatters like this is the brain docking, but this is not what you feel. The, it's like the light got sucked out of the air into this black hole and then for and then this is a second on either side and then it was restored it's an unbelievable experience in fact Steve I should have teed this up during the, the initial description but here's a quick little video that was taken by somebody standing right oh, next yeah. to me in the lovely little town of Stanley Idaho there's no information in this picture you can't see the sun or anything it's just this brilliant white glare but watch as this eclipse happens and watch how quickly this brilliant brilliant too bright to look at glare just simply disappears and here it is on the other side you know quick look at the landscape a look up at this dark thing and then uh, I'm, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. There's no astronomical information there. There's just 
there's just blown out white light and then it just goes and then yeah, it just goes gone. yeah yeah hey uh bill i know you never get tired of hearing this but uh you're right I've now seen uh, <laughs> I, I've now seen uh, two solar eclipses. The first one was in 1979. I was in third grade, and uh, we we they, they brought us out to the playground with our pinhole cameras that we'd made the the day before that morning, whatever it was. And sure enough, we we saw that sun blotted out in those little pinhole cameras, and it was. I, I, you know, I'm not going to try and add to what you said. I'll just say that it was a total eclipse. I was you taken saw a total away. Eclipse. Yes, 1979, yeah. our, our last really good total eclipse that that I was around for. Yesterday, I decided to to, to recreate it with my own pinhole camera, and we only got about 90 percent occlusion here in the in the foothills south of Denver. It was great, but it did not do the thing that it had done in a full eclipse when uh, when I was a kid. And I've been a space nut since I was uh, just knee high to a small duck. I remember asking my mom, three or four years old, it's one of my earliest memories, when would the space age start? Because I was very excited for it. And this would have been 1972, 73. And, and she said, well, you know, we're sending people to the moon and we're putting up a space station. I, I think we are in the space age. And I have been just excited about astronomy and space travel and, and all the rest ever since she gave me that answer. It's just, just the perfect thing to say to a to an excited three or four year old kid. That said, uh, the next total eclipse to come over North America, since you are so right about the, 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 the real thing and the, the, the most of the thing being totally different worlds, the next one is going to pass with total occlusion over my old hometown of St. Louis. I still know mm -hmm. where to get good Italian food. So if the two of you gentlemen will meet me in uh, April. Will, I, will, I will be there. April of 2024. I there say we, we get together. We have some good Italian and we watch the eclipse. Soul. You game? All Soul. right. I'll see you then. There's just one more thing I will add. Uh, and that's and that's this. Um, I watched the eclipse in the very, very good town of Stanley, Idaho. Hmm. And when the when the light went out, there was a long moment and then everybody cheered but they, but they didn't cheer the second it went out in fact they didn't cheer within the first 20 seconds it went out you were too blown away by it i've seen many eclipses uh, through the dark glasses or so on i've seen them projected on the thing partial eclipses and so on that is an astronomical event that is of intellectual interest this was not that at all and for me having waited for so long for it once i started to see the the moon take the first bite out of the sun i said it's coming is this is going to happen i've been waiting for this all my life and it's going to happen <sighs> it's pretty great when you when you look behind you and you see the sawtooth mountains it's it's practically noon you see the sawtooth mountains and and they're completely black silhouette because the the land behind it is lit but they're not they're, they're just like a black cutout with the with the world behind you lit you know that you know that that shadow is coming to an end you know that the light is coming behind you I've, I've said it three or four times today just on this one segment but folks this is the part of it that i did not expect and that i and i still will never ever get over the light didn't just go out it it disappeared into that hole and when it came out again there was a second where I saw pure sunlight with my own eyes. I saw actual sunlight directly with my own eyes for the second or half a second it took before it became too bright to look at it again. And if that doesn't change civilizations, nothing will. There is nothing to describe it uh, except for the fact that it is, in fact, a religious experience that leaves you simply absolutely humbled and awed and as scott said this is the word i'm going to use to describe it from now on selfless selfless for the two minutes and 20 seconds that that thing was happening i was selfless everybody i was with was selfless we were looking at each other with this goofy look on our faces because our, our identity had gone and our identity had gone because our intellect had gone and our intellect had gone because where the bright sun usually is was a ring of 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 brilliant white pearly light and a hole in the sky where where the sun used to be we're not wired for that and i hope to god we never do get wired for that that was the most amazing thing i've ever seen 
Anyway, I've had to talk about it. I'll probably keep talking about it forever. I'm sure I'll talk about it during the Stratosphere Lounge some more. But thanks so much for indulging me. I just had to get it out of my system. I really did. I had to get it out of my system. Uh, and I'll never get it out of my system. So for those of you that keep this uh, show going and keeping the lights on here in the studio, we're very, very grateful. It's all made possible by the members at BillWhittle.com. And we will see you next week.